Hello everyone and welcome to another scrapbook layout process video. You can see I've got some honey bunny paper in front of me. This is the bulk paper so on the other side is this gorgeous yellow dot and I'm going to create an Easter layout today and we haven't actually done our traditional Easter egg hunt yet because not all of the family were together so we're just delaying that until we can all be together because it's always so much fun doing the Easter egg hunts even though my family is grown. They get a lot of fun out of it and I have a lot of fun hiding the eggs. So I'm just going to cut the zip strip off and I have an idea for some oversized Polaroid style frames for this. I'm doing five inch cuts. I am going to need another sheet of this because I think I'm going to end up with three of these. I've been having a little play and I am going to do a little bit of a fun fold back treatment to this. But what I need are five inches by eight inches. So all three pieces are going to be five inches by eight inches. And this is spare. And then I'm going to create another one of these. So this is spare as well. I can save these for another scrapbook project or I can make some cards from them. But I do want to cut another one of these. I won't go through all the cutting. And I am going to be using this 2 by 12 inch piece as well. I'm going to pull in these stitched rectangles and I'm going to use these to create the opening where my photo is going to slide underneath. So how I line something like this up is using my Versamat. I love the Versamat and I want to leave about the same width around the top and both sides and then more of a gap down the bottom. I can see that I've got roughly an inch coming in from each side here. I'll just straighten that up a little bit. I'm not going to use a ruler and the thing to bear in mind this cut line is a little bit in from the outside area so I know that's going to be about an inch and then I'm just going to bring this down so that it's an inch from the top and just eyeball this. I'm not going to get my ruler out or anything like that. I'm going to run this through my die cutting machine and I'm going to do this for three of these pieces. One of them I'm going to use the opposite side. So I'm just going to run all that through and I've got all of those cut now so you can see this is where I'm heading with this layout. And I'm going to have a title down here. I've done some Cricut cuts for that rather than doing some stamping. I wanted a big title here and some oversized eggs rather than some smaller ones. And I think what I'll do is replicate the butterfly pattern on this side. Then I'll bring in the yellow over here or I'm just going to play around with this or I can have butterflies here the yellow dot and then the butterfly on this side. I think what I'm going to do is go for more of the butterflies. You can see I have been playing around with the technique I'm going to show you with this piece. So This is the general layout I'm going for. This one I'm bumping up here. I know I'm going to do some stenciling so I'm just dry fitting this out because I want to create a little bit more interest on the page. Then I'm thinking I might add some additional photos down this side. And I like how this is looking. These pieces are going to be fold back to show the reverse side of the paper. I love working with double sided pattern and these two patterns work really well together. So I do want to embrace some of that. I said I've got some Cricut cuts. So I'm going to bring those in and I'll show you the treatments that I've done with these. You can see they've got some blending on them and I've used some clear shimmer brush on them as well. And I'm just trying to work out if I want to put another egg here with that coming in. So there's three eggs on this side. And then this is going to be my title. Now these images I have got from Creative Fabrica and I've done a little bit bit of manipulation with this one and I'm going to show you how I'm going to fill in these little areas here because I've kept all of those cuts on my Cricut mat. I have changed the font that was in this and the script font was gorgeous. I decided I wanted a clean and simple style font because I wanted these areas of the bunny rabbit to stand out and that just suits my style a little bit more. So you can slice things away in Cricut and make images your own and SVGs. And I've also cut some grass and I'm going to show you how I've inked this up as well. I have cut four pieces of grass that are like this and I've used the same cut but because our paper is double sided, I'm going to have the darker one behind, I think, and the lighter one at the front. And I'm going to do some inking on this. So that I think is going to come across from here. 
I'm going to replicate that on this side. I'm going to do the inking of this to show you how I've created that on camera for you. And I did mention that I like the zip strip, so I'm going to find somewhere to put this as well. And I do want to do a little bit of stenciling on this. So the stenciling I think is going to go in this area here, a little bit behind these eggs and maybe a little bit coming out from here. So I'm going to now take all of this away and get my stenciling done. I'll just put those aside for now because I want to do some ink blending on them. So I know my eggs are going to be around here. So I'm bringing in this tiny four by four inch stencil. This is a Swiss dot stencil. I was going to do florals on this, but with this pattern paper, and the grass and the Cricut cups and everything that I'm using, I think what I'm gonna do is just stick with a fairly simple stencil. Just put my ink off to the side here. And I'm going to use a fairly light hand. So I'm just stenciling this on with Glacier ink. Very, very light there. So I don't think I need to tap off at all. I'm not going right to the edges. And I quite love how that looks. Just want to apply a little bit more pressure down in the center there. While that's in place, I'm going to bring back these three eggs and just lay them out across here to make sure I've got enough of that stencil coming out. So I think I need to extend that a little bit. So let's see if I can line up these dots. A bit trickier when you're using a very light color ink. I think I've got that in about the right place. It won't matter if it's a little bit too off. I don't need it to be totally perfect. In fact, I quite like how it's sort of not in a perfect circle. So I'm just gonna keep doing that along this area here. I'm gonna bring some down towards the bottom so that it's in amongst the grass. I'm gonna bring some over onto this side as well because my strip is gonna go down, but I'm gonna have a little bit of white showing. So I wanna bring this across all the area of where those Easter eggs are gonna sit. And then I'm gonna bring some more up in this area. Now these are only tiny little stencils, four by four inches, but they're very, very easy to work with. So I quite like how that looks, I think. I'm just gonna bring this back in again, put that here, roughly lay out where my eggs are gonna go. I think that looks quite cute but I am going to fill in these two little areas here because they're sort of sitting all on their own with that white space and I can see where the dots are here it doesn't matter that these aren't all lining up perfectly so I'm just going to keep putting some more of these down in those little areas just to fill in those gaps and then I'm using a lighter hand when I go closer to the edges of those. And then I'm gonna repeat that process up in this area here and also down in this area for this egg to land on as well. And then I'm gonna come back and do some treatments on those Cricut Cut pieces. I'm not sure if you can see the stenciling I've just done with it down on the surface here. You can see that it doesn't all match up perfectly, but that's what I love about this sort of stenciling. So this is the part where that big yellow egg with the Easter Fun title is gonna go on. And then I've got this all spread across the bottom section here where those other three eggs are gonna go. So now I'm gonna bring in these eggs. You can see this one I have already colored. So I've used honey butter and glacier ink, and I'm gonna use honey butter on this one. Now I'm going to do my inking up on this before I put the inside sections in here because obviously I need to adhere this to the white part of the egg. So I'm just gonna bring in honey butter ink. And I wanna give these a bit more of a three-dimensional edge to them. So I'm going to concentrate most of my blending down in this bottom right corner here. So I'm just coming in from the edge, blending through, being very careful not to press too heavily where I've got these fine sections cut out. I don't wanna tear my piece. And this is just gonna add a little bit more depth. Sometimes when you do Cricut cuts, the cardstock can be a little bit flat and it can be really good just to add a quick little bit of inking to add a little bit more depth to this. I can't really pick up how much this is actually changing, but when I put it up against the white, I can see more of a contrast happening here. And yes, you could definitely use this as a stencil and just stencil this part in here, and that would be super, super cute. That might be something I might do for a future layout. 
I'm just bringing in more ink around the base of this. If you wanted to add more of a difference in the color tone, you could bring in a deeper yellow like Sundance just to add a little bit more to it. I'm just concentrating with honey butter. And I did want to mention I am using the light side of honey butter. If I was using the dark side, I would definitely be bringing in some Sundance ink. But I'm liking how this is looking. I just want to add a little bit more to the center element. I want the light part of this to be on the top left like the sun is coming from this angle here. Normally we do our Easter egg hunts outside, weather permitting. One year we did it a little bit too late in the day and it was a bit warm. So some of the chocolate wasn't found until later on and it was a little bit melted. So I think that's all the inking I'm gonna do for that one. So honey butter on the light side of honey butter. Now I am going to rotate my piece here because I don't want to pick up this part of the yellow onto my next project in case I make it go a little bit green. So that's something you want to be aware of, especially if you're using your all-purpose mat, the ink will stay wet and you can create a totally different colour because the inks will blend together. So I'm definitely wanting to keep this as a blue and not into a green. So the same sort of thing down in the bottom right and then creating a bit of an arc with this. And you can see that I am supporting this cut here. So that looks pretty good. Then I'm gonna bring in my grass here. I'll just bring in another piece of paper. You can see I've started to do this. So you can see with the dark side of sage, I've brought in quite a lot of ink. And then with the light side, I'm just doing a small amount. So I'm gonna bring in sage ink. Just put these off to the side. And I'm bringing this just off the edge. With the dark side of sage, I went more up into the blades of grass and left the tops of them fairly clear in most part of any inking at all. So I'm just gonna go, keep going down the length of this strip. So that's all I'm doing for the light side of sage. And then I'm going to lay all of these pieces out and bring out my shimmer brush because I do want to add a bit of sparkle to these to match these ones here. I'm just going to cover my work with these pieces. I'm using my clear shimmer brush. Give it a good shake. And I'm going to squeeze. They've got a little push area here. And then all I need to do is splatter my pieces. It does go quite a way. If you're more comfortable with using a splatter box, that would stop it all going everywhere, but it does wipe off quite easily. It's not like a regular paint. So I'm just continuing on. You can really see it on this honey butter piece and the glacier piece here, how the sparkle is picking up. So I just need to set this aside to dry a little bit before I adhere it to the base of my egg, but that's just gonna create a little bit of fun to these pieces. So I just need to clear this up and then I'm gonna come back with the folding and assembly of my page. I won't take you through the whole assembly, but I wanna show you how I'm constructing these folded edges. I've adhered this piece together, as you can see, and when I did the Cricut cut, I kept this on my mat because there are several small pieces here that I want to inlay into these sections. So I didn't want to lose them. So what I find is sometimes it's easier to keep things on a mat. And you can see that this has been reversed. So I've mirrored it so that any little white tick marks will be on the reverse side. And I've made sure that I've put this with the light shade down. So when I take this off the mat, I can easily just reverse it. I'm going to get out my glue here and just put a little bit of this on. I don't need terribly much. And then I will be able to inlay this so that a little bit of the white outline comes around. When I saw this image on Creative Fabrica, I knew that I wanted to cut it out, but it was basically this image here. So I brought the image into Design Space, and then I found an Easter egg shape from my previously purchased Close to My Heart collections. I put that on there and I centered them together and sized it to the size that I wanted for my layout. And then I sliced this bunny with the Easter fun image away from my egg so that I got that overlay piece. And I do have a video on how I do that sort of thing in Design Space. So I will link that below. 
So what I'm doing now is taking the outline of these little bunny paws to use as a guide to place the inside sections on. The only thing I have to remember is that when I pick this up that I'm using the light side and then I can inlay these straight in. Now I don't necessarily have to use this as a guide. It is fairly easy just to work out where to put those little pads for the paws. And then this piece will just fit straight into here. So here's my gorgeous little Easter bunny title all done. I love how putting the inlay pieces in has added the finishing touches to that title. I'm going to adhere this large photo mat to my layout, but I'm only going to put adhesive on this bottom part here when I can find my tape runner. There it is, buried. And I'm going to put quite a bit of tape on here because I want it to stay flat. When I print my photos, I need to be able to slide it underneath this Polaroid frame. I could put it on top if I wanted to. It's not quite an exact three by four inch opening. As you can see, there's room at the top and the bottom. That's because of the thin cut that I used. You don't have to do this step at all. It's just that I wanna have some up from the page and I'll be using quite a bit of 3D foam tape on those. But you could eliminate cutting this panel out and just putting your photos directly on top of this five by eight inch piece of paper. I'm going to use my T-ruler for this so that I get everything lined up. I'm just going to take my a little Easter egg away and leave it off to the side because I do want to make sure that part of this goes over the top of this frame. So I'm just using my T-ruler. I think I'll come in about one and a half inches and one inch down and that one's going direct onto page and I'll be able to pull this back and put my photo in later. This is the one I'm gonna do the treatment to and bend the corner over. So I'm just bending it over slightly and just doing a little bit of a burnish. I'm not pressing all the way down. And then I'm gonna bring in my foam tape and cut a section. And I'm putting this directly up up against where I did that little bit of fold line. I don't want this to be totally flat. I do want this to be a little bit raised rather than folding it straight over. So I'm gonna take away the adhesive. And then, I'll just move this out of the way. I'm gonna put a little bit of dot roller over this part and then gently put this down so that one section of this will adhere to the foam tape uh, and before I press too heavily, oh, thankfully, I'm going to make sure and then I've got this straight. I didn't have it quite straight with these little dots here. So that is going to go over this section here. And I'm going to pop this one on foam tape. Now I've run out of the CTMH foam tape. So I'm just using this Express It roll that I've got here. I'm going to be very generous with this. I'm going to put some right up against the edge here, but I'm not going to be peeling this bit off because I know I need to put my photo underneath. I need another piece here so this is all nicely supported. I'm going to put another one here. As I said, I'm going to be very generous with this. I want it to sit up nicely and I don't want any sags with this. If I don't put all of this foam tape here and I leave this section blank, it will sag down. And then I'm going to do foam tape all the way around these edges. And I think I'll even put a little piece, I'll put a piece here that will do, in this section. So when I put this down onto my page, that's all nicely popped up and secure. If you don't want to use this much foam tape, you can just adhere it direct to page. But I just want to show you what happens when you slide a photo underneath here. You're going to get shadow from this raised part and that's the look I'm trying to achieve. The other thing that you could do if you don't have a lot of foam tape is build this up with strips of cardstock. I've done that before when I've run out of foam tape, so I've just cut a whole heap of white daisy strips about half an inch or a quarter of an inch wide and then stacked them up about four to six pieces high and use them like a piece of foam tape. Now you can see I've only removed the carrier strip piece from this lower section because I want to be able to get my photo underneath. I'm going to get my T-ruler out again. Make sure this is nice and straight. I need to get some of those removable glue dots that Erin uses. Now, when I'm lining this up, I don't want the top of this frame to be at the top height of that. It creates a little bit too much of a straight line when I'm going for a staggered look. So I'm going to come down a little bit. 
and I think that's the placing that I want to have and then I can press down on this foam tape down at this bottom section and I know that I'll be able to slide my photo underneath and I'll still have access to be able to grab the adhesive backing for this and bring that off when it comes to adhering my photos. So the next thing I'm going to do is adhere my eggs. So and this one is going to go straight to page and I'm going to have it a little bit under this photo mat here. I'm going to put that off on an angle. I know that it's glacier on glacier but with the pattern paper it's going to give me enough definition. And remember I'm going to put my grass elements along the bottom here. This one I'm going to pop up on foam tape but I'm not going to put the foam tape down on this bottom section at all. And remember, I've still got to bring in the right page. I've put most of that together, but I want to show you what I'm doing with the zip strips and how I've placed everything. And I've got my grass to go along the bottom of here. Now, I want my grass to sit nice and flat to the page. So I'm using a regular tape runner down the bottom of here so that it will sit nice and flat. I'm just going to bring one of these in. I'm going up about this far. I don't want to cut off too much of the little paw prints. So I think that works quite well. So I'm putting that down on an angle and that gives enough lift to the most part of the top of this and then we'll secure that at the bottom. And then I just need to use some liquid glue to put along the bottom of here. You could use your dot roller if you wanted to, but I quite like using the liquid glue, especially for these fine little sections. If I get a bit too much of a blob happening here, I can just spread that out with my finger. And then I can bring in just a little bit here and there on the longer blades. And it's only a fine amount that I've cut there. So I don't want to go up too far because I want the next section to cover off that straight edge that I've cut. And then I need to adhere the light side over top of that. So there's the left page all done and ready for my photos. Let me bring in the right page so I can show you. I love how this has come together. I've got the same five by eight photo with it peeled back here. And I've gone a bit crooked on this one. Is it too late? No, I can fix this one up as well. So thankfully it's a little bit forgiving. And you can see I can lift this one up and put my photo underneath. But if you don't like lumpy bumpy or you don't want to use foam tape at all, you can adhere your photos direct onto these photo frames. Now I've got two three by four photos here and I've got my zip strip. So what I'm going to do is cut these at four inch lengths and they're going to be my little separators and effectively frame out or mat these two photos. So I think they will look quite sweet going along here. I just have to decide what I'm going to do with the other four inch piece. Because I'm bringing in this gorgeous little floral element, I might want to put that over the other side of the page rather than having it at the top here. I really love how this finishes this elf perfectly, brings in a gorgeous little element. So now I'm thinking, do I put this at the top here and have them all framed? Or do I bring a piece of this zip strip over to this side so that it makes it more cohesive and brings this floral element with the pinks? I think it needs to have some over here. I'm not sure if I want to have it coming out from the edge of here. That's a little bit clunky with the way that the grass all finishes here and then another strip. So I think that's definitely going to go over on this side. I think this zip strip is really sweet and putting it in between the photos here just finishes these off beautifully, I think. It's just a different way of using a zip strip rather than having it as a whole border element. And I'm lucky enough to have some of these honey bunny dots left over. I'm down to my last few yellow ones. So I think what I'm going to do is just sprinkle these around. I'm going to put one of the larger yellow ones here. So that's like it's securing that little flap that's coming over and giving that illusion. I'm going to put another one here. I'm going to put a smaller yellow one up here. You can see on this 2 by 12 inch border, I've done a little fold over there as well. The yellow one will stand out nicely. I might not use any more of those, I don't think. Maybe I'll change my mind when I get my photos on there. But I quite like how it finishes off these folded over corners. And I'll just bring this up so that you can see the stenciling that I did with the dots here and across the top there. 
and also it gives somewhere for these Easter eggs to land as well rather than being direct onto white paper. And I've got two of the honey butter ones together here and I put my glacier one up against this dot paper here so there would be a contrast. And this egg had the same treatment as this one here. The foam tape is at the top and then regular dot roller at the base of it so it would stick down onto the page but it still gives lift and a little bit of dimension. I'm hoping that you can see that to this page here and matches in with the foam tape elements that I have used for these two photo placements. I can't wait to get the photos to put on this page and have fun with the Easter egg hunt. I've hidden the chocolates away and so far I have resisted the temptation of eating them. So hopefully I can have that self-control for another couple of weeks. I always love creating an Easter egg layout every year. I hope you enjoyed me putting this fun layout together. If you wanted to make this into a birthday layout, you could definitely put cakes and balloons and all sorts of things on here. This would work for a Christmas layout as well. You could have a Christmas tree coming up here and have some gifts down the bottom. I think this would also make a really good travel layout with some suitcases or a passport and some other icons from where you're visiting going along this section across here. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, happy crafting and bye for now.